Hey everybody, what's up? OCD Mikey Hi-Fi Guy here. Again, getting at you for another cyberspace intellectual conversation. Um, and uh, today I'm going to start laying some things on you that you will not get from the typical hi-fi seller, person, whatever. I'm going to let you in on listening and how to really listen and decipher what is what you, what you assess what you're listening to, okay? Because anytime you sit down and listen to something, if you're, if you're judging hi-fi, you need to really assess what is it that I'm listening to. Am I, lis am I listening to the same old hi-fi bullshit, which I call it a lot of times, which is just good sounding stuff? I mean, pretty much any uh, hi-fi you listen to, if it's half worth it's, I mean, even the stuff that I consider kind of crappy, it's good sounding, okay? All of it sounds clear, dynamic, punchy. It's got a lot of bass. It's got clean highs. It's got, you know, it's, it's, it's strong in the mid, you know, or whatever. Sometimes people talk about mids, you know, now you're starting to ooh, get a little bit away from, you know, the norm of talking in highs and lows. If you're talking about hi-fi in highs and lows, you're, it's, 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 it's just, you really, you're still not there. You still, you're still not there. Because, um, of course, high and low has something to do with the structure of what you're listening to. But it is, um, it's a given. For any hi-fi system, it better have lows that are strong and it better have clean, clear highs. That is an absolute ground zero. You're at zero when you have that. You're not, you're not even at one, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go into this. This is gonna be a three-part series. And the first thing that we're gonna talk about is something that you guys probably don't hear much about. Maybe you've heard me use it before, but we're gonna talk about the first thing, the first characteristic in a good audio system is dynamic contrast. Okay, so dynamic contrast is um, the difference. Okay, so dynamics is, in, in a system, is, is, is the, the variation or the difference, the ratio between something that is soft and something that is loud. Okay, so like um, a timpani hitting, okay, boom, you know, I mean, whoa, that's going to be, that's going to be dynamic, okay. Um, uh, an orchestra, you know, that, that just hits a big crescendo in an orchestra, um, um, that is going to be dynamic. An, an orchestra actually is a great way to show um, a difference of dynamics because you'll have little things like ting, like the, 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 um, the triangle and the timpani, okay, and the strings and different, you have soft, quiet parts, and then you have really strong, heavy, strong parts. So you, you, you actually, you have, you have that contrast between the two, between the dynamics. Um, what a, 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 a sort of a half-ass system, if, you, if you're thinking about, would do, is it will have just loud, and it's gonna have just soft. So it's gonna do two different things. Um, it, it'll be, you'll have your loud and, and your soft, and you're not gonna have any middle ground. So there's not gonna be much dynamic contrast. You're going to have just dynamic differences, but there's not going to be any shading. There's not going to be dynamic shading in between. It's just going to sound like there's loud things and there's quiet things. So you go into certain rigs and it's going to be very hi-fi sounding. Everything's going to be real clear and real clean sounding, okay, with lots of bass. Okay, this is, remember, this is at zero, okay. Um, and, in, and if you c just, if you're listening to it and all you hear are loud things and soft things and you don't hear middle okay so let's say we were shading okay dynamic shading i'm gonna use that so we can visualize this let's say um dynamic really loud is bright light it's like you're looking at the light and then and then soft is dark okay so you want to get different shades of gray in there when you're listening to a good rig and and what makes separates a, a really good sounding or, or organic natural sounding rig is going to be something that has terrific dynamic contrast. It's going to be able to give you those dynamic shades in between loud and soft, okay? Otherwise, it's just punchy. It's like a PA system. It's just going to have, you know, little soft thing and then just loud ass things, but nothing in the middle. So what this means is some systems, even in the greatest systems, okay, like super expensive systems that I've been into, that reveal things and they bring it so far up into the front space 
that like even the ting of 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 an of um, a triangle in the orchestra will sound like it's up front. That's not supposed to sound up front. It's supposed to sound from the background. You're supposed to get this ting from the background somewhere. It's not supposed to be a lead instrument that you hear right in front of your face. But some rigs in their zeal to be super duper ultimate hyper hi-fi, they overdo it, okay? So you will go into rigs that are overdone, okay? And you have to recognize how to hear overdone dynamics. Overdone dynamics is where things that are supposed to be soft and in the background come up front and they're right in your face. That is not natural. That is not real. That is not how things normally sound. Normally, they have distance. You have different layering. You have dynamic layering or you have image layering. You have front, what's right up front, the vocalist, maybe the electric guitar or the guitar or something that's up front. And then you have the things that are background, maybe piano or some vocal or something that's meant to sound like it's in back it's meant to sound lighter it's a shade of that gray it's not the full tilt bright light that the front forward stuff is so when you're going let's say we'll take i mean if you go to this show and you come with me or you or you're going to this show or you go to any show or you even go to your local hi-fi dealer um you want to make sure that everything's not all up in your face Okay, and many half million dollar systems are like that. In, it, they, they're just all up in your face. Everything that, that, that it should be in background is now a lead instrument, okay? And, and, and it's false dynamics, it's overly dynamic, it's overly punchy, it's overly embellished. It's like sh polishing something up to make it overly shiny. It's like when you go into the TV store and the contrast is cranked up on the TV. That's what it's gonna sound like when you're in this audio rig. It's gonna be like the sound is so juiced up and ear candy that it's overly juiced. Now that stuff will be attractive when you first hear it because it does draw you in when you first hear it. The problem is you ha it has no staying power. So really what's happening is you're enamored by the the, by the brilliance of it, right? You're enamored by the overdone dynamics and the brilliance. Um, and so you become enamored, you want to listen to it, you think it sounds, it's ear candy, I call it, right? And, and, but when you sit there for a while, you're going to be like, after a little bit, you're going to be like, okay, I'm done. You know, what's the next tune? You know, let's try something with a lot of bass. That's what people typically want to do with those systems. Try a song with a lot of bass. Let's see what it can do with the bass, you know? And then you play a song that's heavy in bass and boom, it goes crazy and it gives you all the bass and you're like, oh, I've got so much bass. Oh, you know, but you know what? <laughs> Sorry to be crude <laughs> with that hand gesture, but that's what that is, man. That is a total strokeage um, for brokeage. Um, and forget about it, man. That is not what real music sounds like. That's not how you listen to real music. When you go to shows, you listen to the whole thing. You listen to the whole symphony. You listen to the whole movement. You don't just listen to, you know, some part that has a lot of bass, which is typically what you'll see a lot happening in these rooms. People will be playing songs over and over and they'll play that one part, you know, hold on, let me cue up that one part that does the big bass that does then everybody, because you got to understand people come in the rooms or the demos at the dealer and you're going to be in there for a little bit. You're not spending hours. I mean, sometimes you may, if you know the guys, but usually you're coming in for a quick demo. It's going to be 15, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour of listening to stuff and you're going to be changing stuff. So you're you're going to get little tidbits so they know that so they keep that one dynamic part and they're going to play it for you oh listen to all the bass you know and all this stuff when <coughs> that's not that's not what makes a good rig um is the bass okay it should do bass damn it i mean that's like ground zero um you should be able to have finesse okay that is a key word dynamic shading dynamic contrast and finesse to be able to play soft things that, that get loud, to be able to hear when you press a piano key down. If you've ever played a piano, you know when you press it harder, it gets louder. If you press it softer, it's softer. And there's there's differing layers and you can start soft and hit it harder near the end. Or you can, you, you know, there's different ways to manipulate that shading of dynamic resonating off that wooden board, okay? so. You want to be able to hear those dynamic differences, those little levels of shading of soft and mixed with louder, mixed with levels of, of, of gray in between. That is what a good rig does. A cheap, 
a, a, a rig that's meant to just a commercial. I call it commercial. I'm going to coin that term now. I'm, we're we're going to call it commercial audio, okay? Instead of saying typical hi-fi, because I don't think that really gets across the, 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 what I'm trying to describe. I think commercial sound gets it across better. It's like a PA. It's super punchy. It's in your face. Everything's forward. It doesn't have any shading. It doesn't have any soul. It doesn't convey the emotion. All it does is hit you and maybe surprise you. Wow, it's got a lot of bass. It's got a lot of, you know, ooh, it's super clear, you know. Um, that is ground zero stuff. And it's meant to get people to impulsively buy hi-fi. This is called the commercial hi-fi, or what I sometimes call marketed hi-fi, is ear candy, overly polished, over dynamic stuff that's real punchy and in your face, that's meant to get you to go, oh wow, that's amazing. And you make a decision to buy based on no knowledge, based on like a really quick demonstration. And, and that's no way to spend your money on something that's that expensive. You really want to, I mean, uh, hopefully you're not looking for that now some people may knowingly and, and the purpose of my video and and the following videos that are going to come are going to be to teach you how to decipher and to evaluate what you're listening to so you can make a decision if that's what you want some people may want that okay there's another guy that I do some videos with he loves the wham bam thank you ma'am it doesn't mean it's bad he said to me in our conversation, I would rather be in an F-22 fighter, go Mach 2, pass out, come back to 2 after vomiting in my lap. <laughs> he didn't say that part. I added that in. Um, and, then, and then come to and then get out the plane and, 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 and do it another time, you know. But, and, and he said to me, you want the Gulfstream jet where you can be sitting all day long, relaxing in the lap of luxury. And that's how I like to listen. I like to listen to music for hours on end. Um, and I like to really connect with it. And I want it to be natural. I want to see the masterpiece that the artist paints. Because they use um, different dynamic contrast to get across feeling. Now, if the, if the system cannot relay that dynamic shading, you're not going to get the feeling that the artist or that the orchestra or that the composer was trying to put together. Because hard stuff, you know, in, a, in an orchestra many times, it's scary. It's like heavy duty, like, oh, danger, right? And then it gets soft and it's like, oh, a little Bambi skipping around and, you know, rainbows and whatever, you know, and <laughs> pink hearts, yellow moon, green clovers. Um, wait, yeah, green clovers, that's right. Yellow moons, blue diamonds. Um, anyways, so, um, uh, you know, you, that, that shading helps helps to portray the picture. For me, sitting down listening to Hi-Fi is like a giant storybook. Every page is this beautiful three-dimensional story where you just have all these experiential things and dynamic contrast and dynamic shading is very much a part of putting that across and there are very few systems that do that well and it's a combination of amp with front end with speakers and they have to be put together well to give you that in proper form so when you're listening to a rig this is installment number one of how to listen like in a real audio file and it is listen for dynamic shading or dynamic contrast so anyways that's that. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining. See you.